Hey guys, welcome back to Critical Flick. Today I'm giving my quick thoughts on Dune Part 2. So this movie has really made me a Dune believer. I enjoyed the first film, but I really loved the second one. In fact, I enjoyed the movie so much I went out and bought the book because I wanted to check it out, maybe learn more about the lore and dive into this world even more. So I have to say right away while I'm doing this review, I'm no Dune expert and I may get a couple things wrong. I may get the lore a little bit mixed up, so forgive me a little bit. I'm still learning here. Also try to avoid as many spoilers as possible with this review, but if you don't want any, I definitely recommend checking this film out, particularly if you liked the first one. Definitely check it out and then come back and watch this review later. This film takes place shortly after the first film and we're seeing Timothy Chalamet's Paul Atreides out in the Arrakis desert with the Fremen people and he's trying to work with them to take back Arrakis and stop the Harkonnens from their kind of invasion back onto the planet. Denis Villeneuve cements himself as one of the best directors working today. Not that he hasn't already done that. But this one really feels like almost like a cap on his current career. And it really is a great follow-up to the first Dune. I didn't know if he was able to excel or expound on that first film, but I think it takes it up to another level, both in its lore and its production. And the lore is, I think, the thing that really drives a lot of people to this franchise, myself included. I think in the first film, it does a good job of setting up things. There's a lot of setup in the first movie. But this one really dives more into this world, into this universe, and kind of the beliefs and politics that are happening and that are at play in this in this universe and i think that that is something that really you can sink your teeth into and it's really captivating i know some people may think it's a little bit slow particularly in the middle third myself included when i was first watching it i was like okay this is there's a lot being thrown at me a lot of characters a lot of religious sim symbolism and ideas but i think by the end i was so totally invested and in seeing kind of this change in paul trady's character it really just showed me how much this franchise has influenced other franchises throughout history. The original Dune novel obviously influenced Star Wars and other modern sci-fi epics. And I think that this movie really shows that on screen. It's a great representation of this world. I think the chemistry between Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya really works in this film and it helps set the stakes for the character and kind of what's changing with him throughout his experiences here on Arrakis and kind of coming into his own and kind of transforming as a character. And I think Chalamet's performance in this one is even better than the first film because he is someone who does change so much throughout the film and he has to portray that in sometimes subtle ways and sometimes very large and bombastic ways. I think he pulls both of those off without feeling cheesy or unbelievable at times. Rebecca Ferguson's Lady Jessica also is a character that changes quite a bit in this film and I think she does a phenomenal job. And speaking of that character, I think the overall use of costume design and, and her transforming into the character she is by the end of the film without going into any spoilers, you see that transformation in the costume design, the makeup. And that's another thing that's phenomenal in this movie, obviously, is the overall overall production design and cinematography and I love that it kind of starts off with a bang we have a great sequence in the beginning of this film where you're seeing the Fremen people try to stop some of the Harkonnen kind of scouts coming out that are trying to mine the spice and they're going through and harvesting all of it and there's this use of sound design and cinematography that helps add some weight to that scene and there's like obviously when anybody's floating in this movie it just looks really cool the way that they use kind of those effects looks really interesting and different so I loved how they kind of started off with that they were displaying the use of cinematography, costuming, all this different choreography to just be like, okay, this movie is going to be really epic. We're going to pull out all the stops for this one. Obviously, the score is fantastic. We have it coming over from the first film where it just kind of, it really adds to the world. It adds to the atmosphere. You feel like you're thrown into these elements, the big swells, the quiet moments. And the use of sound design in this movie I think is exceptional. I think the fact that it has this great score, but it knows when to pull back from it. It knows when to create these very kind of, exclamation point moments where it's almost entirely silent and kind of just hearing the folly and the noises that are happening to kind of add to that tension. I think it does a great job. I think it's overall just such a well crafted film. The introduction of Austin Butler's character, Fade Ratha, I think adds a lot of intensity and kind of visceral nature to a film that could come off at times as a little bit sterile. He's just this kind of wild over the top unstoppable unbridled rage that's brought in this chaos that's brought into this world and i think kind of that against paul trady's kind of more reserved character it's a great back and forth and kind of a tension between those two while he's not in the movie a ton i think he does have some great moments he must plays like a darth maul-esque villain that everybody loves he's really interesting when he's on screen and there's a lot you can feel a lot of lore behind him and behind his history but then it kind of like keeps you in the dark a little bit there's one scene in particular where we're first introduced to this character and he's on the harkonnen planet that you see the use of the kind of the dark sun and him fighting in this gladiator arena that was some of the most interesting filmmaking that i've ever seen it almost looks entirely black and white 
but it really isn't when you see there's actually a cool shot where they're coming out from indoors to outdoors and you kind of see what his real skin color is and you see it later in the film and then it goes to this very stark white and deep blacks and kind of those scene that scene seeing this huge contrast is like the biggest contrast you can have in filmmaking this very crisp black and white I think it looked really interesting. There's some really well shot scenes in this film that look just fantastic on the big screen. And while I think, you know, the use of cinematography, lighting, and the practical sets all look great, I think the CGI looks pretty flawless. Whether it's the giant sandworms or trying to do these big shots, the big machinery, and then it kind of zooms in some closer shots, the shift back and forth between practical and kind of computer generated effects, I think is really well done in this in this franchise in general. But I think in this film, you never really feel like you're looking at something that's like a ton of CGI. And I love that. I love a movie that doesn't take me out of it. Where I'm like, okay, this is just all green screen. I don't I don't know what's real, what isn't. This movie felt like it had a great blend of that filming on location, you know, in Jordan, having that desert to kind of set as a framework and build things into. I think helps make it just that much better visually. I would say my only real slight negative to this film is its pacing. If you're someone who doesn't like heavy lore or heavy dialogue, or if you're not someone who's into kind of long shots of maybe a landscape or of, you know, individuals and kind of quiet moments, I think this movie, especially in the middle third, will feel really slow. I mean, the movie is almost three hours long. That's a long movie. There's no real way around that. And it will at times, I think for some people, feel rather slow. And I, I do have to say, if you're someone who doesn't enjoy, like I said, a lot of deep lore, this kind of dialogue, this fantasy dialogue, sci-fi fantasy, that you may be like, why am I invested in this? What's going on? There's like so many characters or so many different, even names for same characters, this religious system, why are these things happening? So you have to kind of think about it in the context of this world. And for me, like I said, that was a little hard to begin with because I liked the first movie. I wasn't like heavily invested in this franchise. And then as I kind of got into this one, it started to be more connected to these characters, understanding their motivations, who they came from, that it made it just that much more interesting to me. And starting the book while I'm, you know, only a, a few pages in, I'm only, you know, 50, 100 pages in, I, I'm just really invested into it and getting more information and kind of understanding it more. I'm just so excited to kind of maybe revisit this again soon. I would love to see the first one again in theaters. I, I never saw it in theaters. I only saw it when it was on streaming. So being able to see maybe both of these back to back would be a really fun experience. Maybe a little bit of a long one. It might not be for everybody, but I'm excited. Like I said, I really enjoy it. And I think a lot of people are enjoying this franchise. And I'm glad that the, maybe the fans of the original source material or the older film feel like it's doing justice to this. So overall, if I were to rate Dune Part 2, I would give it a 9 out of 10. I think it's a fantastic film. It's probably, you know, it definitely is the best film that I've seen this year. I personally enjoyed it more than the first film. It is a little bit different. Like I said, it's a little more lore heavy and it's something that I enjoy as kind of a fantasy fan. I am excited to dive more into this world, reading some of the more of the books and maybe seeing where this is going to go moving forward. I know the director kind of Hinted that maybe he doesn't want to do any more of these movies, but they might continue with them. I would love for him to come back. I know he probably doesn't want to get pigeonholed into being like the Dune guy, even though he has so many amazing movies before this. But I would love to maybe see him return or keep this thing going with kind of the same actors and the same atmosphere, because I think moving forward, this could be even more interesting of a story and maybe seeing an adaptation of maybe a less well-received novel compared to the first one. So if you checked out Dune Part 2, let me know what you thought about it, especially if maybe you didn't enjoy it. I love hearing people's opinions that are very different than mine. And if you're someone who didn't connect with this one, or maybe you liked the first one a lot more and didn't like this one quite as much, I would love to hear your opinions. If you agree with me and you really loved it, i love to hear your opinion too. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. See you guys next time.